We're going to go to the book of Psalms this morning. I'm going to preach to you from the book of Psalms, chapter 23. So if you can find that in your Bible, whether you have a physical Bible, electronic through your, through your phone, or your iPad, electronic device, I want to have you turn there this morning. I want to remind you also that your notes, you can follow along in our app notes on the Victory Church app as well. Uh, if you're a note taker, note takers are world changers and history makers. I've said it time and time and time again, uh, so make sure you're taking notes this morning. Uh, by song and by spirit, the inspired words of the Psalms for hundreds and thousands of years have comforted the lonely. They've strengthened in the weary. They've bind, bound up the brokenhearted, and they've turned the eyes of the downcast up toward their creator. Hope in our life then returns, and life becomes bearable. In the month of June, I'm going to share a collection, a mini collection of teachings entitled On Repeat, The Greatest Hits of Psalms. And so uh, I want to share with you one of my favorite psalms this morning and probably one of your favorite psalms as well, uh, Psalm chapter 23. We're going to go to it right now and read. Before I do, though, um, I want to just remind you, in case you haven't noticed this, if you read your Bible, you will notice that the Scripture often uses uh, certain types of speech, figures of speech, right? Uh, it, whether it's a metaphor or a simile or personification, these different types of speech help us to better relate to who we are, who God is, and how we are to relate and interact with Him in our spiritual journey, okay? And so that's why often a lot of times God will, uh, in the Scriptures, uh, use agricultural language. Now, we live in a technological language or society, don't we? So we use a lot of technological language, uh, but the Scripture uses agricultural language. Just to give you a little uh, backstory here. Psalm chapter 22 through 24, uh, and we read, we read these three familiar and beloved songs that present Christ as the shepherd. Each one emphasizes a different aspect of his person and his work. Psalm chapter 22 represents Jesus as the good shepherd dying for the sheep. Uh, Psalm chapter 23 represents Jesus the great shepherd uh, providing for his sheep and caring for his sheep. And in Psalm chapter 24, it represents or depicts that Jesus, the chief shepherd, who is coming for his sheep. In other words, Christ died for us in the past, he lives for us in the present, and he is coming for us in our future. Amen. Most of the time we hear Psalm 23 read at funerals in a time of death, and, but in reality, this chapter is really about life. It's about the life that the Lord, our good shepherd, provides for us. And let's read it this morning. Psalm of King David, it says this, the Lord is my shepherd. Somebody say, my shepherd. My shepherd. That's important. I shall not want. In other words, I have, another translation says, I have everything that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I'll read it again. I have everything that I need. Some of y'all need to hear that this morning. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Somebody say amen. Amen. Well, I want to share the title of my message and the subject of my sermon today, and that is this, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, thank you for your word and for the moments that we have to gather around your word. God, thank you, Lord, that you, through this psalm, have brought great encouragement and comfort to us, many of us, over the years. And Father, we, I pray that 
in this moment, in this time that we have gathered around your word, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would do what I cannot do. Would you comfort those who are hurting? Would you encourage those that are discouraged? Father, would you restore and pick up those that have fallen down? God, would you reassure by faith, Lord, to each and every person listening today that you are their source and the sustainer, the provider of every good thing in their life. As their shepherd, Lord, they shall not want. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord. Our hearts are open. Our ears are open. We are receptive to what you have for us today. Help us to leave this moment, Lord, not the same as we came in. We pray your word would transform us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. What a comforting, encouraging uh, statement. I love that. But here's what I don't love. The fact that I'm a sheep. And the reality is that I'm a sheep and you're a sheep and we're all sheep is not necessarily an encouraging, flattering term. It's not a label that you want to go around with. It's not something that you want to file away in your resume. It's not something that you want to wear as a badge. I am a sheep. Why? Because sheep are smelly. Sheep are dirty. Sheep are dumb. (laughs) If you know anything about sheep, Man, they're really dumb. They're, they're, they, they do crazy, stupid things. Um, I feel like the Lord could have used any words or any description or any animal in the animal kingdom to describe his people, but he thought that it was so important that we understand who we actually and really are in relation to who he is and so that we will be able to interact with him and understand him in a greater way. See, the Lord could have said, I wish he would have said, my people are like bears. They are strong and ferocious. I wish maybe the Lord would have said, my people are like lions, for they're fearless and brave, they're courageous. I wish maybe the Lord would have said something like, my people are like a fox, because they're wise and they're shrewd. Maybe the Lord could have said, Um, My people are like a dove because they're peaceful and calm. But no, the Lord said, my people are like sheep. I think about that song that my son likes to listen to. Beep, beep, I'm a sheep. Beep, beep, I'm a sheep. And I'm a sheep and you're a sheep. Not only are sheep dirty, smelly, and dumb, but they are, I've been doing some research on sheep this week, as you could tell. Um, they are they're also defenseless. They can't protect themselves. They have no natural defense. Sheep are directionless, right? They get lost. They wander off. They go their own way. They take their own path. They're directionless. Sheep are helpless. They're helpless. There's a thing called to be cat. When, it, when a sheep gets cast down, they fall on their side. And if you can, you can look this up and Google it. I promise you it's a, it's a real thing. They get caught on their back, and they'll kick and flail, and they'll make all kinds of noise. They'll say, bah, but they cannot get up. They are helpless. <laughs> they can yell and scream, but without the shepherd, they are helpless to get themselves up further. They cannot even ask for help from other sheep. Other sheep are helpless to get their friends up. Sheep are helpless. They're defenseless. They're directionless. They're dirty, smelly, and dumb. But here's what is so important for you to know with all these negative things about sheep and about the characteristic of a sheep is that sheep are valuable. Sheep are valuable. You know, basic economics will, will, will reveal this to you is that because, uh, a, a shepherd is only necessary because sheep are valu- valuable. You see, a shepherd, because there's great value placed on the sheep, now you have to have someone to care for it, to watch over it, to tend to it, to feed it, to lead it. And God, as our shepherd, places great value on you and I. We at Victory Church, we believe with all of our heart that all of humanity is valuable to God. 
every person from every background, from every skin color, from every tongue and tribe and nation, come on, every preference, every orientation, every hair color, come on, every person that doesn't have hair, every single one of us is valuable to God because we were made, created in the image of God by our creator himself. We are valuable to God. It doesn't matter your personality, it doesn't matter your net worth, it doesn't make you less or more valuable, but we are all valuable to the Lord because we are created in his image and his likeness. And so we have great valuable to God, but the reality is even though we are valuable to God, we are still sheep. And you might think that you're smart and that you might think that you're tough, You might think that you have it all together and you can figure it out and you can do it on your own, but can I promise you today, you are merely just a sheep. There's the bad news. But you are valuable and precious and worthy to God. This morning, I want us to learn from Psalm chapter 23 because it gives us insight into the unique relationship between our heavenly shepherd and us, his people, his human sheep. We enjoy a special bond with our shepherd, and as such, I want to share with you this main idea from our message today. As my shepherd, I can count on God's continual care. As your shepherd, you can count on God's continual care. So how does our shepherd, how does God care for us? God cares for us first and foremost as his shepherd. He cares for us by offering a relationship with us. As my shepherd, God offers relationship with me. This is what I love. Uh, Psalm chapter 23, verse 1, right off the start, David, the writer of this psalm, is writing in the first person possessive pronoun. He uses that perspective and he says, my shepherd. Notice what he doesn't say. He doesn't say the Lord is a shepherd. He doesn't say the Lord is your shepherd. He doesn't say the Lord is our shepherd. No, he says the Lord is what? My shepherd. He makes this very intimate, very close, very personal. You see, the reality is this, that information is not a substitute for personal intimacy. You can know a lot about something or someone. You can know a lot about sheep. You can know a lot about the Bible. You can know a lot about anything professionally. You can know a lot about a person. However, you do not know a person until you know them experientially and intimately. And there are levels to this. There's different levels of relationship. I want to encourage you this morning that God, as your shepherd, places great value on you, and he wants to have a relationship with you. It's a personal relationship. It's an intimate relationship. It's a relationship where he knows you, but not only does he know you, but that you know him. It's not good enough just to know about someone. You have to have a personal experience with someone to truly know them. I think about being the pastor of this church. People that I have relationship with, I have a closer relationship, not that I love anybody anymore, but I have a closer relationship with certain people because I talk to them more. I spend time with them more. And so God offering a personal relationship with you requires something from you, and that is a personal move toward God. Not just knowing about him, but knowing him personally. A personal possessive pronoun David uses here. And it's so powerful Because it's almost as if he's saying today, do you have a personal relationship with this shepherd? He wants to have a personal relationship with you. The shepherd lived with the sheep. He knew the sheep by name. He knew the ones that were prone to wonder. He knew the ones that were weaker. He knew the loyal ones, and he knew them by name. And the sheep, too, despite their stupidity, despite their prone, their propensity, their their desire to wonder, right, right? 
They knew the shepherd as well. They knew his sound and they knew his smell and they willingly follow him wherever he leads them, trusting him to supply their every need. So every born again child of God, if you've asked Christ to come into your life, to be your savior and to be your Lord, then you have a relationship with God. But that relationship that you have with Jesus is contingent upon your pursuit of having a relationship with, uh, with him through intimacy, not just information. God cares for me, so he offers a personal relationship with me. And this is where I'm going to spend most of my time, uh, the remainder of my time here today. As my shepherd, God cares for me, not just by offering a relationship with me, but he also cares for me by accepting a responsibility to me. He accepts a responsibility to me. In other words, I shall not want. He cares for me. He shows his love and his mercy and his compassion and his provision in my life by caring for my every need, by providing for me. The shepherd only accepts a responsibility to me, though, when he is in relationship with me. David described how the Lord ministers to his sheep. He begins in verse uh, 1b, and he says this, I shall not want. The rest of this entire psalm is built upon this statement right here. David begins in the rest of the psalm, chapter 23, to talk about how God provides for his needs and how he doesn't have to want and that all his needs are met by his shepherd. And this word want is in the imperfect tense. I'm giving you a little grammar uh, lesson today. It's an imperfect tense, which means that it's a continual action. David is saying, I will continually not be in want. He's saying, I'm going to continually have all my needs met. I have everything that I need at all times. And these are words of faith because he's looking not just on his current situation, but he's looking down through time and he's saying by faith, God, I might not have everything I need now. I might not know what lies ahead, but I know this, that because you are my shepherd, I have all that I need. It's a statement of faith. How many of you have a trusting God today to provide all that you need today and all that you need in the days ahead? Come on, give him praise. David now tells us about the things that the good shepherd has taken upon himself to do for all those that belong to him. He promises, firstly, his provision. In verse 2a, it says this. He says, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down. Come on. In green pastures. Can't you just see it? Peace and serenity on the side of a mountain coming into a valley where there is lush green grass is saying that your shepherd, the Lord, your shepherd is leading you, his sheep, into a place of provision, into a place where he's taking care of your needs. He says he leads you into green pastures, and he also leads you beside the still waters. This is important to me because the Lord is providing what I need as my shepherd. And because he's providing for what I need, I don't have to worry. Jesus said these words in Matthew chapter 6. He says, don't worry about your life, about what you'll have, what you'll eat, and all these things. He, says, I, he said, your Father in heaven knows these things even before you ask of them. He's saying, so don't worry about tomorrow. And then he says one of our favorite scriptures, and you could probably quote it in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given or provided or added unto you. See, the Lord promises as we are his sheep. He promises his provision. And that's important because as sheep, we are helpless to provide for ourselves, We really and truly are. See, this is what a shepherd, you need to know about a sheep and about the shepherd and the way that he provides for his sheep. A sheep, as a, as a shepherd would lead a sheep, that sheep would stop right before, if, if it had a muddy puddle, if it had uh, something that was thirsty and it stopped out of mud, that, that sheep would settle for something less than what the shepherd had desired for it. Sheep will settle 
They are helpless to understand what is best for them. You and I, oftentimes, we like to try to understand and make decisions on what we think is best for us. We need to go to the shepherd because the shepherd knows what's best for us. He's already leading us and he's guiding us and he's providing what we need even in advance. So right before God would get them to a clear water, a place of health, a place of strength, oftentimes sheep would stop and they would settle for what's less than them. Sheep are helpless to find shelter. Sheep are helpless to find their own food. Sheep are helpless and inadequate to find safety and protection for themselves. Sheep are helpless. But the good news is we have a shepherd who provides for us and meets our needs. Amen. Our provision is not limited, as God is our shepherd, not by our circumstances, but by his ability. He can provide for us even in the most impossible situations. You might be in an impossible situation. You might not have provision today. But can I promise you this? God has told us in his word that he will make a way even when there seems to be no way. He is a God who provides the needs for his people. I was reading this story uh, this week about a man named Captain Johnson. It's a true story. He was serving as a chaplain on an island in the South Pacific during World War II. He prepared to go on a bombing raid in enemy-occupied islands several hundred miles away. The mission when they got back from doing those air raids, was a complete success. But on the homeward course, the plane began to lose altitude, began to sputter out, and the engines faded, and they had to land. A safe landing, though, was made on a strange island. It was learned later that the enemy was just a half a mile in either direction. Yet the landing had gone undetected. The staff sergeant came out to the chaplain and said, Chaplain, Captain Johnson... Uh, you've been telling us for months of the need of praying for and believing that God answers prayers in times of trouble and that he does it right away. We're out of gas. <laughs> Our base is several hundred miles away and we're almost surrounded by the enemy. Johnson began to pray and lay hold of the promises of God. He believed that God would work a miracle. Night came and at around 2 a.m. that sergeant awakened and felt compelled to walk to the water's edge. As he came to the water's edge, he discovered a metal float which had drifted upon the beach, and upon that float was octane gas. In a few hours, the crew reached their home base after they had filled up the plane and flew off. They had reached their home base safely. An investigation later revealed that the captain of a U.S. tanker boat, uh, finding his ship in sub-infested waters, had his gasoline cargo removed so as to minimize the danger in case of a torpedo hit. And so he unloaded these barrels and he placed them on barges adrift over 600 miles from where Johnson and the plane and his crew were forced down. God had navigated one of these barges with gasoline on it through the current, through the wind, and he had beached it 50 steps from the, strange, from the stranded men. Here's the reality. God knows how to meet your needs, when you need them and where you need them. He is your provider. How many of you have known and seen the faithfulness of the provision of God in your life? Amen. God will provide as your shepherd. Not only does he provide, but he promises them his paths. This is verse 2 through 4. It says, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The good shepherd always leads his, she his sheep in the right way. Now, whether that path leads you like I like it to, to green pastures and still waters, or if that path takes you into the valley of the shadow of death, we can rest assured that God's path is the best, pa best path. God has a purpose for your path. No matter what the pain you're going through today, no matter where he's leading to you to, he's got a purpose and he's got a plan for your path. Trust his path for your life. He's always leading us in his path, in the best path. 
We don't always like the path that life takes us, but we can be assured that he's leading us in the best, best path. Psalm chapter tw- uh, 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in their way. <laughs> this is what's amazing about that word path right there. That word path is translated as a circuit or orbit. A circuit, look at me, a circuit or an orbit. The Lord's leadership always leads us in a path that causes us to orbit him. Just as the heavenly bodies, the planets are revolving around the sun and the gravitational pull of the sun, those that are his, that follow him, that are his sheep, are on the orbit of the right path about him at all times. He gives us his paths. But here's the bad news. Sheep are directionless. Sheep are prone to wonder. Isaiah chapter 53 says this, we all like sheep have gone astray. We all get to going to the path and the direction that we think is best for our life, just like sheep do. Sheep wander off. They get themselves in trouble. They find themselves in situations where they are in grave danger. They are directionless. They are mindless. They have no purpose. They seem to stumble along in life, and they can go along through the path just as the wind blows, or just as the weather changes, or just as another sheep leads them or takes them a certain direction. How many of you know that in our lives, we are often directionless? And I don't even have to make up any crazy stories about sheep. I just read a few things. I I often struggle, like, how do I uh, share this truth with the church? by finding some kind of story to share with you, but I didn't have to f- figure anything out. I just began to read stories about sheep. And there was in, the, in eastern Turkey a shepherd who had a huge flock of sheep, 1,500 sheep. And the sheep, uh, they were eating one morning and they had lost track of the sheep and the sheep got uh, off on their own path. They had lost their way and they got in, in their own direction. And the sheep began to walk off a cliff and the sheep began to follow each other and along that path, and they're just kind of, you know, just kind of going along as sheep do. And one sheep would go over the cliff, and the next one would follow him and go off the cliff, and the f- next one after him, up until there were 400 sheep that had fallen off that cliff. Out of the 1,500 sheep, 400 died. And the only reason why 1,100 of them survived is because when those 400 fell to the cliff, the other 1,100 didn't die because it created like a landing pad, a soft landing pad because of all the sheep that had fallen before them. True story. Sheep are dumb. Sheep are directionless. They will go upon any new thing that comes along, any way that society or culture says that it's right, or we should go this way, or I want to be on the right side of history. We are sheep, and we are often directionless. But God, as our shepherd, is leading us in the path that he wants to go, and his path is best. God promises them his provision. He promises them his path. He accepts responsibility to them by promising them his presence. Here's what I love. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And because the Lord is with us, he has promised us his presence, I can do anything, I can go through anything, I can survive anything, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper, I'm more than a conqueror, there's nothing that I cannot do if God is with me. Because God is with us, we can survive anything, we can overcome anything, we can make it through anything, we can move through any valley, we can move through any difficulty, any struggle, any pain, because the Lord is with us. Aren't you grateful that the Lord is with you today? Amen. <laughs> Promises his presence, his paths, his provision. And finally, I want to share you, with you this. He promises them his protection. He promises his protection. This is what I love. David mentions those tools of the shepherd, the tools of his protection. He says, my rod and my staff, that your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod and the staff, two different tools of a shepherd. The rod being that shorter tool that fights off 
the enemies, that fights off wolves and lions and the predators of the sheep. The staff being that staff that as you would kind of picture Moses being a shepherd out on the side of the desert with the crook in that staff. That staff that's used to pull the sheep back. That staff that's used to direct the sheep, to lead the sheep. That staff that fights off the, the predators that would come, that would want to destroy the sheep. God offers his protection. He would correct the sheep. He would draw them close when they began to wander and lift them out of crevices to which they might fall. Here's what I love. We need the Lord's protection every day. Why? Because sheep are defenseless. Sheep are defenseless. When's the last time that like you saw a sheep that would just growl and show their teeth and get ready to pounce and defense, defend itself? that would begin to maybe come up and oppose something that wanted to fight it. No, sheep are defenseless. They can't even protect themselves. They have no natural defenses. See, the reality is like, like, like uh, in, 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 in the animal kingdom, God has given every animal like some way of defense, right? Like the cheetah, the cheetah's like, hey, you wanna mess with me? I'm out of here, right? You think of like the skunk, Right? I love the skunk. The skunk's like, oh, you want to mess with me? Hmm. Silent but deadly. Right? I mean, you think about, like, the blowfish. I love the blowfish. That's, that was hilarious that God did. Oh, you want to eat me? Like, just like blow up real quick and, like, just, just, just kill you, you know, if you eat it. So I love all these animals in the animal kingdom, but the sheep is totally defenseless. The sheep cannot defend itself. And apart from the shepherd... The sheep is dead meat. The sheep is destined for disaster. It's destined for death. But the good news is that as our shepherd, the Lord protects us. And here's the thing that I love too. The Lord doesn't just protect us in the way that we want him to protect us. The Lord protects us in what's best for us. Here's, here's the thing. We, we want to think about the Lord being our shepherd by fighting off uh, the wolves and we're fighting off the enemies and fighting off our predators. And as we're in the valley, you know, we're just laying beside the green pastures, just enjoying everything while the shepherd's fighting for us. He's protecting us. But the truth is that there is pain sometimes in God's protection. The truth is, you and I, because we are prone to wonder, we are prone to get ourselves into trouble. Sometimes God has to cause pain to our life in order to bring us to his path. God will take that shepherd's staff, and if that, sh if that sheep keeps on wandering, keeps on going off, keeps on putting itself in danger, keeps on going its own way, the shepherd will literally break that sheep's leg, shatter that leg, and then the shepherd will pick that sheep up, that wayward, disobedient, rebellious sheep, that wants to go its own way, will pick it up on its shoulders and will carry it to where the shepherd wants it to go. You see, sometimes protection is painful. Sometimes God's help, it hurts. And the truth is maybe you're going through a painful situation today. Maybe you're in a situation that perhaps God didn't put you in, but God is committed to your pain. God is committed to keep you on his path and so sometimes the Lord will cause pain in your life because pain is an indicator for what you don't need to do and where you don't need to go and who you don't need to get caught up with and the direction that your life is heading. God will cause some pain in your life in order to put you on his path because he is your shepherd and because he loves you. You see, our good shepherd in caring for us offers a relationship with me. As my shepherd, God cares for me by accepting a responsibility to me. He promises me his provision. He promises me his protection. He promises me his path. And he promises me his presence. If you would just stand up on your feet all across this room today as I close. The truth is, as a sheep, and how I interact with God and what God has said about me, as a sheep, the truth is I'm directionless, I'm dumb, I'm defenseless, and I'm helpless. But the important thing that you need to know is 
that you are valuable to God. And because you are important and valuable to God, Jesus says that not only does he provide, not only as a shepherd does he lead you in his path, not only does he give you his presence and his protection, but the good shepherd actually gave his life. He actually gave his life for the sheep. The shepherd coming as the good, the good shepherd becoming the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world in order to die for the flock. This is what God through Christ has done for us. John chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus said this, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hired servant, he who is not the shepherd, the one who does not own the sheep, he sees the wolf coming and he leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. But Jesus said this, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. 